Hello, I'm Nigel Griffiths. Welcome back to part three of this HMC Enhanced Plus Graphical User Interface Live Demo. As I said, this is part three, looking through the main menu and highlighting the bits that I use all the time. Next, though, we're going to go back to what I sort of regard as my home territory here. We look at the main menu systems in here. So we've got uh, systems, and so we've seen that for a while now. We'll be looking at the individual systems and drilling down in a minute. We've also got partitions, loads of partitions. In here, it's telling me that there's 28 in here, and uh, if I select things down, I can go down uh, further. If it looks like anything starting with a VM, and I've got lots of those, there's 18 that start with a VM. What about a VM1? Oop, we're down to 10 now. Maybe I can find the one I want, or I can just put in 77, and I can find the one I want. Okay. Um, also in here are virtual I.O. servers. Now, that's interesting, and don't we keep the virtual I.O. servers away from the uh, partition view? Now, the systems and the virtual I.O. servers are really together. They're the infrastructure, along with the hypervisor, but that's in the system. Um, and there tends to be one class of people that are dealing with infrastructure. So they are starting and stopping the machine, uh, maybe upgrading the uh, firmware on it, and uh, upgrading the VAO servers as they come out uh, once every uh, year or so. Um, and there's a different set of operators that deal with the uh, partitions. They tend to are more interested in, in the service we're providing. Is the database up? Is the LPAR or the virtual machine up, is up to run the database? Or have I got all eight of the application servers running and available in their partitions? So different classes of the person, and they maybe want to do performance tuning on their databases by adding or subtracting CPUs um, but the VO server people well, they don't do that very often uh, they just give the VO servers enough and then they leave it well alone uh, lock it down and don't fiddle about with it okay now also up in here we have frames now if I had an E880 available then I could show you that uh, the frames uh, where it works um, so but I haven't got one of those um, unfortunately my uh, my manager can't afford one. I've got shared storage pools. But we'll look at that uh, a little bit later on, uh, towards the end. Uh, we also got the enterprise pools. I don't have an enterprise pool. I don't have a whole group of EA80s, for example. And we also have groups in here. And we'll look at a nice, powerful feature for grouping things together. And a one click, you can get what uh, of different classes. You can decide whatever these are called. Maybe these are the DB2 guys. Uh, maybe these are the WAS servers. Uh, maybe this is the SAP instances, for example, as a group. And you can bring them all up and have a look at what a particular group of machines are doing. So that, there are resources, that's the first one. If we go to the second one in here, we have HMC management. So we have HMC management settings. So here's the guided wizard. We could find that up in here as well, couldn't we? Um, network and setting those up, the change the network settings. It tends to require a reboot, doesn't it? Um, the BMC and the IPMI, that's for the, the new um, HMC based on Power 9. We've also got in here performance monitoring sessions and time and date. All the regular things, uh, I think they all actually appear on one of the menus in the classic version. So here is the same the sorts of things. And, and if we click on uh, any of these, I'm just trying to think of a simple one, a nice little simple one, change the date and time when it starts up. Oh, oh, that looks just like it does on the classic version because this is the same classic panel as being uh, reused. No need to um, change that. It works fine for what it does. Right, now in here, that was the settings. We've got the console management. We're doing a bigger operations on the HMC. Shut down and restart, for example. Um, update your HMC. So again, we're choosing the console, then we're doing the update. Rather than the other way around, we can back up our data if we're going to do an upgrade, save an upgrade, uh, save upgrade data, for example, uh, manage replication. So these, these are the less active uh, places that you uh, go in here. We have templates we're going to look at and system plans we'll have a, a little look at later on. System plans you can probably work out what's... Well, let's do that now. Let's just look at the system plan. And this is the one thing that isn't in the 860 version of the HMC and everybody was very worried that the 870 version wouldn't have system plans. It takes a little while to go and find them all. I created a bunch of them earlier on. And um, well, I 
probably on the uh, 31st of July, uh, a while ago now, just to prove that there, and we can create an import and refresh the system things. Okay, so back down in here. Uh, that will keep some people happy. Um, this is probably the, the least <laughs> useful item on this main menu. If we click on there, it says, no, if you want to do an update, you need to go to to update the HMC, you go to HMC, update the HMC. And if you've got to update resources, then you go to resources, systems, all the servers, and then upgrade the firmware on the server. So that one is just a reminder. I guess a lot of people kept looking for the update option on the main menu uh, rather than doing looking for the resource and then taking the update uh, operation. So that's there So to, to put you right. Uh, in here it uses security. And again, these are what we can see, we've seen before. I don't know, we can click on here and uh, add a, a new user with the right permissions in here. Here's our little set in here. This again is exactly as we've seen for many years in the classic. We're not going to go into that any further. Okay, down in here we have serviceability. This is where we're logging everything. The one that I typically go into quite a lot is a serviceable event manager. And again, this brings up the classic interface. We say, okay, looks at all the problems we've got. And um, it's saying there's 23. We saw that on the startup panel, didn't we? And um, then you go to the, the full view. And it zooms out across the screen. So I'll just drag that back into the window. And uh, if I scroll over here, here's all my external environmental error. This is my server's warning that the temperature's getting a bit hot. And if it goes any further, we're going to have to power off. I've got a bunch of other things in there I need to go and have a look at. Some of them with the uh, shared storage pool in here as well, going over the uh, thresholds. I was deliberately trying to uh, force it to do that to make sure that the messages come up and what they look like. Okay, so cancel out of that, and then you just cancel out of all of them in here. If you go to an individual uh, machine and ask for the um, event manager from there, then you can uh, it will automatically pre-select that machine and you only get the the uh, serviceable events for that particular machine okay so that's the main menu uh, vast bulk of the time is this first three at the top is where i spend all my time share storage pools if i want to go and have a look at what's going on um, if i want to restart my hmc that's in here in management uh, templates is here and system plans is here um, if a new user is in here but that's what i tend to use most of the time. And we're at the end of part three. In part four, we look at managed servers. That's HMC speak for our power computers.